The lift has been empty for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And we gotta put something on it. We got so many junky cars. So we've been waiting, we've been trying to get a bunch of stuff like running and driving and, and on the road. And we, um, this winter been working on that 38 convertible real hard. And the goal was to try and get it at least drivable around the neighborhood. And then we can start doing small projects on it. So we're finally over that hump, has brakes, starts well. We've moved it around the property. It, it, you know, it's going in the right direction. And we finally just got the 39 coupe, the mad scientist coupe. We got that thing uh, running and driving and Steve went over all the brakes. We replaced the fuel line uh, that was a little crusty. And then most importantly, I ended up doing a full exhaust system on it. So that thing is close to done. These things are never done. So the one that we kept getting asked about when we went to pick up the 39 coupe was what's up with the Lincoln? We keep getting questions. What's going on with the Lincoln? Did you sell it? Blah, blah, blah. Basically, I just had it stashed away at our off-site storage, AKA Mike's house. <laughs> Iron Trap East. Yeah, Iron Trap East was at Mike's house uh, where we had that stashed. Uh, recently, we had to go get that 32.5 window. So I needed to use that space again. So we brought the link in here, put it in my trailer. We're finally ready to do something with it. So this car, if you thought the 39 coupe was bad for mad scientist stuff, this car is probably worse. Um, it did not fare as well visually, but it seems like it's very solid, much like the other one. So today what we're gonna do is get this thing out of the trailer, get it in the shop. We're gonna just look over the car and see what we need to do. We can make it to-do list. Um, and then we can do a video afterwards uh, another time where we're gonna actually hopefully get it running. But we're gonna pull it out. I've only looked at this car twice. Once when we drug it out, once I peeked in Mike's trailer when we were going on a road trip and we were stopping at his house and I was like, oh, hey Lincoln. Bye Lincoln. So here it is. I'll get to look at it finally and really look over this car and see uh, how good or bad it is and we'll find out. So open the door, roll it in the shop. Let's take a look. Hey dog. <laughs> What's in the trailer? What's in the trailer? I don't know. What is, what is in the trailer? What is, what's in the trailer? Come here. What do you think of your purchase? <laughs> it's super cool. It's really big. I will say Nate did enjoy this being in my trailer. He wanted to look at it constantly. It is a pretty car. Even in its, its uh, poor lot, state, yeah. it's a pretty car. But um, yeah, this thing is, uh, it's something. Why is there an electrical cord hanging over the seat? I just noticed it. I think that was to his fuel pump that's in the back. Cause there's a gas can on the floor. Hmm. We'll get into that. Let's start in the front. Yeah. So this car has had some craziness. So, um, <clears throat> this car for at least we can tell for quite a while. Uh, if you haven't watched the video, go watch it. We pulled this in the 39 coupe out. This car was stored in like a homemade temporary, I don't know what shed 
thing. Uh, enclosure with tarps over the top and it did not fare very well. And even though it was covered, the tarps were ripped, the front was not covered very well and it was getting weather. Um, now he did keep it out of the weather somewhat. Uh, some of the stuff didn't fare as well. So for instance, front bumper, one of the prettiest, coolest factory bumpers. Uh, this Lincoln front bumper, 4041, maybe 41 only, I don't remember. Um, super cool. So like a three-piece bumper has two end pieces in this split center section. It did not fare well. I mean, the chrome is not, not really there. So not great. But it is there. could be re-chromed potentially. Um, the, you know, I didn't even really look. You can see it's been, great job, buddy. The front. No, oh, come on. <laughs> you can see the uh, center nose here has been banged up and welded on and who knows what else. So uh, this thing is not some virgin original untouched car. This one versus the 39 is definitely, you know, fared a little worse. Uh, but we noticed on this car, actually, I don't know if the grill, is the grill broken? No, the grills are super solid. Yeah. Believe it or not, oh, there's one broken bar there. Um, but he had extra bars. We have them in the car that we saved. There was extra or extra grills. Grills are very hard to find. They're made out of pot metal. Uh, I'm sure somebody can solder them, but they're- We have one and a half complete unbroken grills. Nice, so maybe so we, that one. Hopefully the half that we have. So these grills, very hard to find. They're usually in much worse shape. So just one broken, bar is is pretty incredible they're pretty fragile so if you even bang against them or anything they they can break because they're just like pot metal um so cool that they're there it's missing all the trim and center emblems um which i will say we do i think have all the parts that are missing i have a very large overflowing pallet of lincoln parts yeah and we didn't want to sell any of that stuff because i didn't know what we were doing with the car or anything and didn't want to sell something and then needed to buy it and get bent over later. So, um, yeah, so the car has factory headlight type, uh, factory headlight rings, but it's been modified or customized at some point in its life. There's supposed to be some like marker lights that sit on the top here. This fender you can see a lot. Yeah, you can see where they welded up the holes and back in the day it was done. And then the hood has been nosed. Um, Surprisingly well. Yeah, surprisingly it's well, it's done pretty well. It's in gray primer. I don't know if this hood is one he got later. It's just odd that this hood is in such fantastic shape and not 18 different brush strokes over it. Or did he start with the hood and that's as far as he got? We don't know, but um, I'll pop the hood. I'll show you guys under the hood. You might need a light. The hood's pretty big. You'll probably see it. The most violent hood pop ever. <laughs> yeah. Try doing that in an enclosed trailer. It scared me a couple times. Hood opens. It's incredible how nice it opens, but then you see there's like four wild springs. And it holds open. Yes, there's no catch on this one. Here, I'll take that, Steve. So, wow, the battery's still hooked up. Wish I would have saw that. <clears throat> Is the one in the trunk hooked up? No, but I wish I would have saw that because I would have disconnected it. Although it sat for that long, I'm sure it's quite dead. Yeah. Surprisingly uh, not corroded, that corroded. No, it's not. So this is where you can Things quite, get unraveled very yeah, quickly. Yeah, they get a little scary. So we have a we have this dual custom dual coil setup. So the Lincoln distributor is actually like a dual, dual coil setup from the factory, but the coil is kind of all in one. But the way they're designed is essentially like two small coils inside of it. So it's quite easy to go to a dual coil setup on them, which is what he did. He made his own um, remote coil piece out of plastic, which we pulled one off of the 39 and it was done really, I mean, as crazy as it looks and homemade, it actually worked well. I'm sure this is the same way. So I, uh, he, he definitely got things to work. I won't say that. It's it is super a, weird watching the point spark with that clear yeah, top. Yeah, kind of neat. Um, so, but there's just the execution sometimes. So we have a piece of uh, fence post that's used here um, or something that it, it goes around the radiator neck, which is kind of interesting, but that has two 12 volt coils we can see on it. So he was running two six volt batteries together 
to create 12 volt on the ignition side, but he was still running what we found on 39 is running six volt to the other stuff like the dashboard and things like that. So I'm, sure, I'm assuming this is the same way. I'm not sure which one he perfected that on. I wonder if that's 12 volt. I'm sure this is, yes. So he was so wild. So he was charging. I bet you the battery in the trunk is 12 volt and that is six volt. Uh, yeah, that might be right. Yeah, that's, that's probably true. So he's running, this was charging a 12 volt battery. Stock generator was charging the <laughs> six volt battery, which was running all the other stuff. Very crazy. So you could just see there's just wiring all, you know, just like we saw before, all over the place. He was using this like, I, I don't know what he was doing for fuel line, but this again is like clear plastic hose. I mean, look at the, uh, I think there's a trunk in, or a, a fuel tank in the back seat. So he's feeding it with fuel from two different tanks. If I remember oh yeah, yeah. So right here <clears throat> we have a little petcock shut off, and then we also have the stock fuel pump with another fuel line going into it. And then there's a there's your fuel filter coming from maybe the well no because this is like the 39. There's the factory line oh, from yeah. the tank, so that goes into somewhere. Oh my goodness. This also goes into somewhere. Both under the dash. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I can see the, yeah, I don't, I don't know where there's, that. There's two, there's one rubber line there and the other one's on that side. One's here on the floor. That one? No, the black one. Oh yeah, running right under the throttle pedal. And that then what's the that. other black one over there? That I think is wiring with a radiator hose <laughs> we have to put this on the <laughs> it's f planners <laughs> you know thing what was the other one in i don't remember but there was something in the trunk look, it's the got 39. a little toggle switch like a sardine tin That's right. <laughs> we, before you press switches we should unhook the battery oh my god he's got his little jumper wire here that probably goes from there to there let's continue the engine this is a disaster <laughs> holy crap man Oh the crazy it still gets crazier under the hood too. That's not the worst part. Yeah, so you start looking and it gets worse or crazier. I don't know. He made some sort of PCV system. So you could see that he raised up the intake. There's pieces of tubing there with washers that he raised the whole entire intake up. And then he's blowing. The blower's right here. This is a heater blower. Yeah, heater blower that's blowing air down into the valley or into something. Into the lifter valley. Yeah, and then there's some kind of crazy contraption going on over there. And it's with... coming out the crankcase breather and into the carb. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's a PCV of... It's as simple as that. It's yeah. It's a PCV system of a, <clears throat> so, of a so really get, insane person, so. So you get good gas mileage out of a V12. Yeah, so... I can't believe, I mean, if you look at like how this is done, like how that possibly sealed, I, I don't, I wouldn't have the balls to think that just putting a bunch of pieces of tubing that I cut off and, and shoving them on top of the intake. It looks like there's a, there's a gasket down there, but I think he used a piece of tubing that's yeah. smashing down. I can't wait to take this off. It's going to be interesting. I, I, it's just insane. And this thing obviously ran. I mean, why would you have the charging system and everything hooked up like that if it didn't run like this? So it's just crazy. So he's got like a homemade offset generator bracket here. He's got another homemade bracket for the blower motor over there. Oh, this also has um, drain pipe exhaust. Yes, I see there's a sewer pipe welded onto the, this manifold. Yep. So. This uh, has the same exhaust we just took off of the other car. I'm sure there's fence posts for tailpipes like Steve found before. I will say this original green paint, I wish it was that color all over. Is it there? Yeah. It's all on so. the inside, the frame. Yeah. I don't know if it's original, but it's a very nice cool color, color green. Yeah. But still has the V12 Lincoln flathead engine in it. Um, yeah, I see that. There's some plastic. There's lots. Yeah, there's lots of wooden and plastic spacers in there for the carburetor. Um, also, what carburetor is that? It's a single barrel. 
Yeah, that is not the correct carburetor for this engine. This would have had like a Holly or a Stromberg on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that. I can't read is. that tag. Is it a is it a two barrel or it looks like it's, it's a single. single? It's a single. Single barrel <coughs> carb on a V12. I mean, yeah. the V12s are only 200 cubic inch, I think, right? Yeah, they're they're pretty small, but still, yeah, it's just wild to me. So yeah, that stuff is all very scary. I don't. Really the big know. thing is though, the engine turns over by hand. Yeah, so I think what we're gonna do, just for the sake of doing it, because, and I'm glad we record this stuff because no one would f believe you if you'd say this. If we got this to run with that crazy madness going on, I, I, I mean, it, it had to run, but like we need to try. At Maybe, least, at least take that carb off and put a good like 97 or something dude, it on. might start with that shit on there that's you never true. know you could might pour some gas down and the thing will just run <laughs> you never know but we need to get spark but I, I you know if it turns over and it had spark and, and all this stuff was hooked up i would think it ran and drove i mean it's, it does have a 1980 inspection sticker we'll we have to look at the plate on the back we just don't know if the inspection sticker was done before or after the insanity has started occurring mm -hmm. um so yeah the engine bay we're gonna i think what we're gonna do is just careful we did it's what i did on the 39 i disassembled anything that i thought would start a fire so <laughs> charging system anything with those weird switches and stuff that we don't know what it does i don't want to like restart the earth by clicking the buttons at the wrong time <laughs> the earth spins the wrong way yeah like we don't Superman. we don't want to do anything that's going to cause the space-time continuum to get messed up so we're going to disconnect all of that stuff and then just do the basics just like like the 39 it disconnected anything that started a fire and just ran jumper wires to the battery and had all the stuff disconnected see if we can get spark get it to crank and see if it'll fire. Um, might even just use this carburetor and just see what it'll do. At the very least, we could pour fuel down its throat and see if it'll make noise. But there's a wet spot there. I can't tell if that's fuel or if you're oiling the linkage there. Yeah, I don't know, but I don't know. I saw that fill thing there. That's too. for the uh, oil. That's the that's the uh, I believe for the for the dipstick. Oh, okay. On Lincoln's, when they had an oil gauge there, and it's a rod that goes all the way down into the engine, and when the oil's full, it goes on this this little. I think Sorry. it's missing. There's supposed to be a little ball in the end, but this little pin goes up and down, and that tells you if you got fuel pressure. I mean, a uh, oil. Hmm. Fancy so car stuff. So you could stuff. feel it actually when you pick it up. It drops down and goes to there. So according to that, it has no 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 oil in it. Well, the so. intake's also spaced up a bunch. Oh yeah, so that's probably. Because that's bolted yeah, that, to the intake, in, right? In that case, it's probably right above the fill line. <laughs> it's spaced up like th three inches. Um, yeah, and so that's... There's just so much stuff on this I, thing. I don't even Everywhere know. you look, it gets worse. Yeah, it's just like little pieces of... Like you, like we shoved this plastic bag in here so it wouldn't arc. I it guess. wasn't underwear. Yeah, and then we got a random piece of... Tin foil. Tin foil. I think he just found his dope. Oh, maybe. No, no. Uh, just tinfoil. People this crazy aren't. You don't need drugs when you're, when you're this crazy. It just comes natural. So, sorry, man. So that's the engine bay. We're going to move to the... Inside. Inside. So, same thing we saw on the 39. It looks like he took tar and put it around the cow vent to seal it up. Somebody left a good comment. It's probably... Um, the same stuff you use on electrical fittings that are outside like a meter head. It's like a putty that doesn't ever like get dry solid. It's like malleable still. That's why uh, you're able to scrape it out. This stuff seems dry solid though. <laughs> yeah, well, if you put it in 80 years ago, it probably did. So I'm very surprised like the door poppers work so well in this car. I know, man, this car smells crazy, I'm sure. I left the door open, I'm sorry. I gotta sneak in here, dude. Yeah, the linkage is all there for the door poppers too. I was actually, when we rolled it in here, I was looking at how they function. They have this crazy rod that goes down and pushes the latch. It's yeah, kind of neat. This one's... You have to close the door to reset it. Ah. I was fiddling with it the other, earlier. <laughs> so, so far, I mean, I don't know on your side, it, 
doesn't look like, I mean, there's some rot in the rocker on this side a little That's bit. That's how it is. It looks like it's been re welded over here. There's a bunch of goob welds. Okay. So I mean, it probably, it's gonna need some rocker work for sure. Yeah, it doesn't look like the doors have ever been repaired either. Not on my side, if you can see all the, like the factory tar Sound and it. stuff is on yeah. the inside still on it. This one's, it looks like the tar, oh no, this might've had a repair in it. The tar's not all the way to the bottom. Hmm. It's hard to say. I don't see a weld though. Moon, moon, can, it, can I? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. This is Moon's, uh-oh, uh-oh. Ah, oh, there's nothing on it. So you get a good driving hat. Cool old hat, yeah. Better than underwear, we're doing better. So yeah, you could notice that there is a, a piece of wood here for a riser with a gas pedal, which is great. Or maybe it is the gas, no, it's, a, it's some string and a screw. Dude, this looks terrifying under here. Yeah. <laughs> just... What is that piece of plastic? Oh, you're missing the resistor bank there, Matt. This piece, see that piece of plastic? Yeah. That's got like resistors through it. Those white things are resistors. Oh, I see them under the dash, the clear plastic. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. Yeah. And there's all these little like <laughs> light switch shaft release. And there's a piece of a wiper arm on it. And then this other piece of unknown metal. Light switch nut tool. Okay, so this is the tool to take the light switch apart, apparently. This is my favorite thing. Unfortunately, we lost audio in this video, but read that note. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what it was. I love the old clothespin. It says, oh, this is from 20, 2020. Found on floor driver's side, question mark, and it's a, just a random screw. <laughs> I mean, it, everything was kept so well. Yeah. You know, that would be alarming to find a single screw amongst, <clears throat> on the, floor. amongst the planner's container. <laughs> but we're going to leave that there for now. <laughs> now, the dash is where stuff gets really scary. Oh, sorry, Moon. I'm getting in your way. But, like, so there's a 33 4 amp gauge here, just hanging there that was doing something. And then he's got a multimeter. I guess this is a, is that vacuum or yeah. compression? Vacuum gauge mm -hmm. that I guess ran in. And then he's got this, I'm guessing he was changing, I, I don't know, dwell. dwell. It's so a dwell he, meter. he was changing the dwell on the points on the ignition system to probably try and get it to run better. I, I, and then he was looking at his vacuum gauge while he was running it. I love the little panel there as well. Yeah. Switches and things. Yeah, buttons and switches. I, it would be fun if I wasn't scared to like put a battery and just flick buttons. Yeah, and, and there's switches. switches all underneath here. Yeah. There's over there. This is cool. Oh, that's sure that. That's neat. All the way in, and then the whole switch assembly pulls. Yeah. So this is a put a tiger in your tank. So super cool little. Oh, that's neat. Uh, drop in any mailbox. Happy motoring key club. Houston, Texas. So super cool, but that's, I'm surprised that the key spun, but then again, if we have a note from 2020, he was messing with it. Yeah. So surprisingly, this car had keys in it and was easy to steer. Nothing in there. Uh, glove boxes fell apart. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, the Calvin's interesting on these. It's all the way over here. Oh yeah. And there's a linkage it. that goes over and up. Oh yeah. But there's all these, like, just, I mean, look, some kind of Remote. capacitors or, or resistors, resistors that are put in, like, uh, don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> You're there's blast. like, look, in the dash here, there's soldered, there's wires, like, soldered into, like, the dash for grounds or something, but you can get a good shot right there of all the. Wow. Those are resistors, they're screwed. There's little small resistors screwed in there. Oh my god. This is a fire waiting to happen. This is a little light. Oh, that's a little indicator light. <laughs> Great. There's two of them there for something. Uh, might be turn signals. Oh my god. What's gosh. up? Moon's like, this smells. The crazy thing is, the car is fairly complete for as crazy as it is. This has, there's a Wisconsin Oop. identification number on there. Didn't the 39 have a Wisconsin tag too? I don't remember. 
I'm pretty sure they both. Oh, there's the body tag. There. Oh, that's a that's the Wisconsin. Yeah. And I can't read this '76 tag anymore, but yeah, crazy. But so at some point he must have lived in Wisconsin. But we were told it came from California. But he lived in Wisconsin before he moved to Jersey. Oh, well, there we go. That makes sense. So inside the car, we found these door cards. They were actually door panels. They were in like the garage with the 39 and we almost missed them. And I was like, I think these are for the Lincoln. Um, pretty cool. I'm glad we got them because they actually have, there's not really garnish molding, but there's these pieces of tin that actually go over the top of the door here to complete that. So even though the vinyl's crappy, it was very important to get these pieces because I would have had no clue what they looked like. So now we have them. Oh, get in there. Get in there. What do you, is there anything good? Uh, people commented about this skirt. Oh, it's a shame. Skirt wasn't on. The skirt was there. It just was not on the, that wheel for whatever reason. So we have that. We can put that back on the car eventually. Um, we didn't look much further. That's just like jacks yeah. and stuff. So what is going on with these electrical cords? Smell that box, man. <laughs> So they go behind this. Mm -hmm. That's gonna just have to go in the trash. Oh, there's a... Okay, it's some kind of outlet that's wired to... Back up front. The other end goes into the trunk. This goes up front. Oh, to the plug. To the plug, so this plugs into something into this broken outlet that then goes into the trunk somewhere. Which is also a nightmare. <laughs> this is like a bad horror movie. How do I remember? Oh my God, I forgot about all this. Look at, like, just... And mind you, when we had to get this, it was like winter time or just getting into winter and getting very cold. This was full of water. Oh, the battery's still hooked up, by the way. Oh, great. That's good to know. <laughs> good thing Whoops. we were good. Good thing we were very thorough when we put this in storage. <laughs> um, this little Tupperware bin was filled with water, like halfway up the battery to the top of it, and it was frozen. So we pulled that out and broke the ice out and put it back in. So that was obviously it was getting some water leaking. Where does that thing go? I think this might be it. Oh yeah, probably. It's a brown electric. Oh, here we go. Extension cord. To another cord. To another cord, which plugs into some stuff that's soldered and capacitors and a wire. There's a circuit board on there. That's scary. And then there's some jumper wires Resistors. that come out of this. <laughs> alligator clips. Oh, there's a good alligator clips for you, oh, Steve. Oh yeah. man, they are good ones. Mm -hmm. Do they go to the, the starter coil that's in the fender? I don't know where any of the, they they just go to this. This is oh. this might be a bomb. <laughs> Pull it all the way out. I can tell you what it is. There's a tag on the side of it. That is. Is that a timer? Um, it might be a battery charger. There's a fuse in it. Yeah. Highly modified. Dude, I don't. It might be a battery charger broken apart. Light alarms. It's got a transformer on it. I don't know, it's pretty scary. It might be a battery charger. Wow. And you would plug in to charge the 12 volt. Okay. And then you can see there's a solenoid in the trunk with wires jammed in from all. Do you think those starter wires are big enough? This is the important thing that we should have in all these vehicles. <clears throat> was there yeah. one in the 39? I don't remember. But... <laughs> But the trunk floor in here is very... It's pretty solid, yeah. Yeah, it looks, so far it looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, so that stuff's terrible. This is painted gray too, so I don't really understand. And there's green here. Yeah, this is gray. It's sprayed right over the little bit of rot there. Eh, yeah, just ignore that. It's pretty pitted on this side too. Yeah, I guess that means you have to chop it up because it's already been, it's rusty beyond restoration at this point. Um, yeah, one 
his exhaust pipe cover. Yeah, yeah. so Mises don't get in. The, the soup can is a nice touch. I think one of these lights, unfortunately, it's this one. was cracked. It's was the good. only spare part we didn't get. Yeah, that is. Just means we'll have to put different taillights in it. Yeah. But the top assembly is all over there. I don't know if these were power on this. Steve, could you go on that side? Yeah. I don't believe they were. Wow, that's actually got pretty decent vinyl is there on it. This has been replaced. It's got Velcro on it. Yeah. Is there a lock? There's an ashtray. It's almost got to be some sort of a lock. Hey Siri, oh, a cigarette later. how do you open a 1941 Continental convertible top? Let me see the light. I want to just make sure there's no cylinders. I don't think so. Oh yeah, it's power. Oh really? Yep, there's a jack screw on an electric winder. Ah, fancy. I kind of figured because a 40 Ford you could get a power top. Really? I didn't know like, that. Yeah, it was like hydraulic. Oh, you're right. I did. I, I should know. I sold a set of 40 Ford hydraulic Top. Yeah, so this, okay. has got, <laughs> this has got a linkage with what looks almost like a power window motor. Can I see? I'm and it's got a jack screw down in there. Right. Oh yeah, way down there. And that screw spins, which pushes the pushes it up. Man, we gotta get that working. That'd be cool oh, just yeah. to see. Yeah. Can't really get a good shot, but yeah. It's, it's not gonna it doesn't run, but we're gonna make that top go up and down. Yeah, that is way down there. Yeah. So that's great. Um, yeah, I, I, it's kind of crazy that it's in such good shape, but was not really stored or taken care of overall that well. But it's a shame. I really like this dark green. Yep. Is this door catching? Oof. Not happy. Mm -mm. I like the mud daubers that are in there. Oh, yeah. Should have evicted those before they come alive. <laughs> yeah. But everything, I mean, the majority of the, definitely all the important stuff is here. And like all the dash parts that are missing, I'm pretty sure we have at the warehouse, like the speaker grill and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, nice. I, I'll put a photo in here of the pile of parts that we have the, set aside. Probably the biggest bummer is the steering wheel. Is <clears throat> we have another one. I know, but that one's bad and then they put a is that a super deluxe button? yeah it's a 41 horn button yeah but that wheel could be saved and recast so we'll decide what we're doing they should have been ivory at this point right 40 41 they were like white yeah i think they were i think they were so we don't know what we're doing exactly with the car yet but that we wanted to look it over and see some of the mess we have i mean we have a big project just in this area of getting rid of <laughs> it's also back here too don't yeah, forget yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but mostly you can cut here and just pull and pull so i think that's what we're going to do we're going to disconnect the systems separate the the engine from the mad scientist wiring get a six volt battery i think we have another uh optima six volt up there or seven volt battery so we'll put that in here because that'll take some cranking so i see it it's over on the top shelf up there so that'll take some cranking as we're trying to get it running but yeah i think the first thing will be getting spark that might be a little difficult if it's been sitting for a while just because the points might be corroded and the distributor's a little bit of a pain on these to get to so We'll have to get past all that. Unfortunately, we can't just hit the easy button and throw one of our Petronics distributors on it because it's got it's a different, you know, it has a different distributor since it's uh, a Lincoln engine. So, but very cool, super solid. Um, we could, I don't know. Hmm. What's that? Never mind. Ignore me. So we don't, like I said, I don't know what we're doing with the car yet. Uh, we had some people ask to buy it or were interested in it. I hesitated because part of the fun for us, whether we keep the car or sell it, is getting it running and reviving a car that's been sitting a long time. This one's kind of an extra challenge because of all the wiring and stuff we have to kind of figure out. So we're gonna, we're gonna do some of that first, get it running and moving under its own power. 
uh, and then we'll make a decision from there as we go. Never know, but we gotta get this thing at least running and moving under its own power. So if we need to put it away in storage, we don't have to keep pushing it. I'm tired of pushing this thing and we've only pushed it like two or three times. So that's all we have for this one. This is just a little snippet of what is the craziness that's going on with this car. We'll shoot another video trying to get it running. So make sure you keep an eye out for that video coming very soon. Drop us a comment down below. Let us know what you think of the craziness in the wiring. Have you seen something worse on one of your own old cars or used cars that you bought? I'd love to hear if you can trump some of this craziness in the comments down below. Thanks guys. Catch you later.